for your entertainment. Well, for my entertainment. But also for your entertainment. By extension, in a manner of speaking. Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, yeah, this is going to be a bit of a quick video, quicker than my usual videos. Uh, and I'm actually putting out more than one video this week. A little upload-a-thon, if you will. Uh, yes, I'm actually off uh, work this week on vacation. Uh, it's a bit of a staycation, even though I kind of hate that word. Uh, but yeah, not going anywhere, any trips, uh, like up to Portland or anything. Uh, so I've got a little more time on my hands than usual, so I thought I would crank out a few videos. Uh, at least one of which you're not going to see for another week or so. I mean, I want to spread out the videos instead of dumping a whole bunch on you all at once. Uh, but yeah, I thought I would, uh, on Monday, this past Monday, uh, Mom and I went up to Salem, Oregon, which is about an hour, an hour and a quarter away from uh, where we live, uh, just for a little day trip, just to have a little fun, uh, to break up the monotony of being at home all week. Uh, and... She went and did her thing, and I actually went to the local FYE store. Well, local. It's the closest one to us. Uh, FYE store, that's, you know, the, a chain that I, th I think is around most of the country. Uh, it's kind of like uh, those of you who are in, uh, I think, the comparatively small area that is served by vintage stock. It's kind of like that store. They sell new and used um, music, movies and game stuff. Uh, not much more than that, though. Vintage Stock has a couple of other areas in their stores, which is kind of cool. But uh, yeah, uh, FYE primarily music, movies, and games. And uh, yeah, went up there, and it is actually a pretty large FYE. It's, um, uh, well, actually, I don't, I don't know how what to compare it to. It's not nearly as big as like a supermarket or anything like that. But it's uh, quite a, a good-sized uh, store. The largest FYE I've ever been into, anyway. But uh, yeah, I thought I would show you the little haul of uh, about 10 CDs I brought back from FYE, as well as a couple of things that uh, just came in the mail from my friend Noah. Uh, I was not expecting this box until uh, next Monday, so it got here like four days ahead of time. I mean, that's probably something that will never happen again with the U.S. Postal Service. Uh, they, they try. I mean, I got to admit they try. But uh, they're usually not nearly as fast as this. But anyway, that stuff came in today's mail, so I thought I would show it off too. Uh, but before I do any of those things, I wanted to show you something that I got in my uh, St. Vinny's Thrift Store haul that I did a couple weeks ago, and I forgot to show you guys when I got it. And it's actually a book, uh, the only book that I picked up. And it's a very nice book. It is the Great Rock Discography, 7th uh, edition, and you can see how thick it is. And this is from 2007 or 2004. It only cost me six bucks. So, uh, okay, yeah, 2004 is when the, the, uh, the foreword or the intro is from. Yeah, 2004. So the information is not completely up to date. But it's, it's very cool. I mean, yes, you can get everything on the Internet these days. And the Internet is not limited by... Uh, sizes of the pages and the size of the fonts and the binding and all that other stuff and you know but still there's something about holding a book like this in your hands uh, I, I just love browsing these books uh, in free time and who knows if you ever want to look something up that isn't too new uh, when you don't have an internet connection books can come in handy but yes, this is not as easy to read as uh, some of the other discography style books that I have. Uh, for instance, they do, you know, they list the discographies as, you know, I mean, the title is discography, but they list everything in order of release, uh, albums, singles, and stuff all mixed, uh, intermingled together. So, you know, it takes a little more effort to find what you're looking for, but uh, I'm not, I thought I'd show this, uh, put this page up here, give you a little example. Uh, Green Day, it of course gives a little biography of the band. And then it'll show you all the releases. And one thing that this book has that a couple of my other books don't is under the entry for each album, it, sh it lists the complete track listing, which is kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, very neat book. And of course, for six bucks, how can you go wrong? Uh, but yeah, I was very, very happy to get this. And it was actually, I had left the store and went back in for some reason. Oh, to use the restroom, I think. And... I saw this on when I went back in, so I missed it the first time. So there was a reason I needed to go back in there. 
it was fate. So yeah, that was a, a very cool book, I thought. And uh, yeah, especially as I said, the price point, you cannot beat it. But anyway, uh, yes, now on to the uh, stuff that... Uh, I thought I would show the stuff that my friend Noah sent me first, uh, before I get into the FYE finds. Uh, here we have Billy Joel Essential Video Collection. This is actually uh, has been on the rack at uh, House of Records for a while, and I've been eyeing it for a while, and then, he, you know, he had... He had it and offered it up to me, and I thought, what, you know, why not? I mean, the, the guy is just ridiculous, ridiculously generous. Uh, I, I love him to death. He's, he's my little brother, what can I say? And just a, a great guy, and uh, he had something that I kind of wanted, and it... Yeah, another fate thing, you know. And then a couple other things he sent me was, I think, and I think he got these at uh, uh, thrift stores. A Duran Duran live CD, still sealed. Uh, the uh, little busted uh, case here, but that's that can be easily fixed. Oh, actually, it's not busted. It uh, This, I guess, was a uh, promo ed copy or something, because they actually carved through the ca through the jewel case. They really wanted to mess up that UPC symbol, didn't they? The, the, the barcode. So they, But by golly, they got out. They must have had a, a saw or something that they got out of any. But anyway, uh, yeah, a more recent live album, 2011. It's got stuff from their, uh, I cannot remember the name of the album that some of these tracks are from, but of course a lot of their old classic hits as well, so awesome. Uh, the only other live album of Duran Duran that I have, I think, is a record store release on vinyl of uh, their Live at Budokan, and I'm not sure what year that was, but uh, cool to have a live CD of theirs. Oh, and I also have their Arena, that which was kind of a half-live, half-studio album. Actually, no, just one studio track. The rest of it was live. And that was from, like, 1985. So, uh, yeah, very cool stuff. And then also I had, uh, <clears throat> for a while, I had a two-disc Super Tramp anthology. And I decided, uh, when I looked and saw that all the Super Tramp tracks that I care for are on, like, two or three albums, I decided to just, you know, get rid of the uh, uh, compilation and pick up their albums individually. And Noah had one. And it was uh, in the quietest, even in the quietest moments. This one has "Give a Little Bit," which is a great one of their great hits from the '70s. <clears throat> and uh, so, yeah, and it's it's the remastered edition, edition. So, and I found the remastered version of "Breakfast in America" recently. And as you will see at Fye, I found uh, the the third one, the only other one that I cared about. So now I'm kind of you know I, in very short time, I've gotten all these Super Tramp individual studio albums that I really care to have. And depending on how much I like them, I may uh, deepen my catalog beyond that. And the third one is actually one that I already had. It's uh, Stephen Page uh, from Bare Naked Ladies, his, uh, uh, or I guess one of his solo albums, not his only solo album. But as I said, I already own this, uh, but he uh, thought he'd slip it in as a surprise. He knows how much of a Bare Naked Ladies fan I am. Uh, but you can't look a gift horse in the mouth, as they say. I'm not sure what I'll do with it. Uh, I, I might, I don't know, I might take the other one and uh, put it in uh, a trade-ins or, or a St. Vinny stack, a donation stack or something, and keep this one. Since it's all nice and new and, and still sealed in its cellophane. Whereas the other one was, I bought used and was aged a little bit. So, anyway. Now, drink break first. Water break. No, it's not vodka. It's water. Honest. Now, on to... Yes, I actually have a new tray. <clears throat> uh, a, a different setup from the table that I used to have. I, I was using a fold-up table, but the uh, tablet was sitting down lower, and I didn't like the angle that it was at. So I got... Uh, this tray is actually something that my brother got at a thrift store a while ago. And <laughs> the, just the luck we've been having at thrift stores... It turns out some of the things we get at thrift stores work better than what we'd had and paid real, you know, real money for. So yes, this uh, table is working really well. It's got a bigger surface area than I thought it did, so it's got room for the light and the tablet and all that stuff, and a little room to put a stack of CDs on. So I think I will be using this table from now on, and it's a little easier to set up than the folding table. So anyway. On to the stuff that I got from FYE, and this is another thing that I had already had. It's uh, a singer-songwriter, indie pop-rock singer-songwriter named Landon Pig. 
This is his debut album LP. I already had it. I had bought this one for Noah, but then I realized after I'd gotten it, I started second-guessing my, second myself, and then I texted him, said, I already gave you Landon Pig's album, didn't I? And he said yes. So, but uh, this, um, the front and back covers are completely different from the the actual version. This is a promo copy. So, yeah, it's got different artists, artwork. So I think I'm going to hang on to this just because it's, you know, got different and, in some cases, better artwork. I like the front cover, but I, I should have had the other one with me to show, show it to you. But uh, the back cover here is just kind of a plain track listing. But on the retail version, he does a little uh, silly little drawings, almost like Pictionary drawings representing each track. So that layout is kind of cool. And it, something different for an album than this. So anyway, uh, on from that. Uh, one album that I was kind of looking for uh, is The Best of Chris Isaac. I, I picked up a few of Chris Isaac's uh, individual albums, liked them, and they've kind of cooled on me a little bit, so I thought I would... Uh, I'm going to... Well, I'm going to give those one last listen. I think I have two in there, and uh, assuming I don't want to keep them, I'll just swap those out for a compilation. Save a little room, a little space. So yeah, that's, that was kind of cool, I thought. And uh, then these next two were on a two for fifteen dollars rack, uh, still sealed, brand new. I got a uh, 20th Century Masters edition of Mac Davis, a uh, singer-songwriter, uh, primarily country, but he also did pop, and he passed away earlier this year or late last year, as I recall. And uh, track number two, that's uh, a song for me if I ever saw one, Hooked on Music. So, but yes, um, Baby, Baby Don't Get Hooked on Me was a big hit, hit of his. And so, uh, yeah, I thought I would give him a try. And this is actually a uh, Canadian release. And you can tell the Canadian from the American versions uh, by the spine. You can see that the lettering on the spine here is just kind of a, a regular dimensioned font. But on the spines on the American ones, the name of the artist is in that tall skinny font that's on the front cover. So... A, a trivia note for you guys, uh, so that, that's the way that you can tell the Canadian re releases from the American releases. It's something that only a CD-buying geek like me would know. And uh, the other 2 for 15 uh, disc that I found was the other Supertramp uh, album that I'd wanted, Crime of the Century. So, And it is, again, the remastered version. So, yeah, very cool. And then they had a 50% off rack. So a uh, bunch of CDs, new and sealed, for half off the sticker price. And one of the ones that I was most excited about, because I've been wanting to check out this album for quite a while, is Pure Comedy by Father John Misty. So I will finally be able to listen to that. My only gripe with this is that the track listing was on the cellophane. The cellophane wrapper, instead of on, like, a sticker on the back. So That's a little pet peeve that I have of... Uh, with album packaging, whether it's CDs or LPs, is when they don't put the track listing on the outside. Come on, people. Anyway, the other half-price thing was, uh, this is something that I've had before, I got rid of, and now I've got it again. The very best of Macy Gray. She put out a couple singles that I, I like the sound of, and for some reason I thought that Nutmeg Fantasy from, I believe it was the first Spider-Man movie, I thought was on here, but it's not. So that gives me another reason to... I've been wanting to pick up the song soundtracks of the first two Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies from the early 2000s. And so those are on my permanent shopping list. So when I find them, I'll get them. And then a couple of um, multi-disc greatest hits collections that I found. And these were retail price, so you know, and, and they were new and sealed. So not particular bargains, but I thought I would get them. Uh, first, we have Robert Palmer in the uh, the Universal Family of Labels Gold Collection. I had two individual uh, Greatest Hits CDs of Robert Palmer's until recently, but this one, uh, both of these have more tracks than those other ones did. So I have more songs than, on, than was on those two discs. Plus, I, I'm saving half the shelf space. And then this other one... For quite a while, I had gone on the uh, the mission of building up a library of all of Elton John's studio albums. And I got about a third of the way, 
close to halfway. I don't think quite halfway. And, you know, that was when I had a lot of, a lot more money. And now it's been taking me a lot longer. And there are still a lot of gaps in the collection, like 14 I still don't have. And I've decided, you know, there are a lot of uh, songs on a lot of those albums that I don't probably don't really care about. And so, and plus, with, you know, in the interest of saving shelf space, I thought I would actually reacquire this because I'd had it a long time ago. I think it had been in my sister's collection, but I, I let it go because I was getting the individual studio albums. His 1972 to 2002 Greatest Hits multi-disc set, but this one is actually a little bit different than the one that I had previously, and I think it might be a European uh, edition, but it's actually... The one that I used to have came with a bonus CD, but it was in its own uh, a, a little sleeve, a loose sleeve that just you just kind of tucked in between these two. But on this one, the track listing is here, which it wasn't on the other one, and uh, it's actually in its own tray. So a little bit thicker than the uh, previous edition that I had. But uh, yes, this honestly, except for a couple of studio albums that I wanted to get, is pretty much all the Elton John that I really need. You know, Maybe at some point when I just really want to just go nuts and collect them all, maybe I will again. But for now, I think the ones that I don't care much for, I will go ahead and put in the trade-in stack for uh, House of Records or whatnot and pick them up. So now this next one, Almost every time I am at a... Uh, I'm going to put these down. Put them off my lap so they, they, they don't topple over and spill on the floor. Uh, almost every time that I go into a store, uh, as long as my money isn't really, really tight, uh, I will find something that I decide to impulse buy that I've never heard of before and just decide what the heck I'm going to try out. And this is this was the, the winner of, that, of uh, this trip to FYE. It's a guy named Mondo Cosmo. And I had never heard of him before. Just something about the um, packaging just kind of said, hmm, I might like this. And so I actually, I looked him up on Wikipedia when I was in the store, but I didn't bother um, sampling any songs. But it listed him as a folk rock artist. So, you know, and, and I, I like enough stuff that's that fits that description, that general description. So I thought I'd give, go ahead and uh, pick it up and give it a try. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I have not listened to it yet, so we will see what it sounds like. But I thought that was kind of, uh, you know, something told me it was worth uh, taking the gamble and buying it. And then we come to the my, my favorite find of my trip to FYE. This is something that I've had on my list for probably three years or so. And it is a soundtrack, and it is the score from the movie War Horse, the Spielberg movie. Uh, the score is by John Williams, my man John Williams. Uh watched the movie and I loved it and it's got some harrowing scenes in it. It's it takes place during World War One and it's about this young man who uh, befriends this horse. And uh, in World War One it was not uncommon for them to use horses in combat. And so uh but you know he befriends this horse, horse becomes his companion and it's really a heartwarming movie, but there are some, as I said, some harrowing scenes, but it's worth watching. I mean if you want something that really kinda gets hold of your heart and, uh, and and there's a payoff. There's an emotional payoff without trying to spoil the movie. Uh, but So yeah, watch it if you haven't yet. That's a good, good movie and a great score, of course, by John Williams. So yes, I was very happy to get this one. The disc is not perfect. It's got a couple little blemishes, but it looks like they're all on uh, outside of the recorded area of the disc. It's on the blanks part of the disc. So, But yeah, I was very happy to pick this up. It was, it was $9.95, and it was used, but... Uh, for as long as I've been looking for it and uh, the trouble that I've had been having finding it, it was worth that price to me. Uh, especially considering some of this other stuff, I got a couple things for a dollar. Uh, most of the other stuff was like three or four dollars. So I think I, I did pretty well money wise with FYE. So, uh, but yeah, that was uh, actually this video was not quite as brief as I thought it was going to be. But yes, that is it for my uh, my FYE finds and recent acquisitions otherwise video. So uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Check out my past videos. You're going to find lots of goodies there. And check out the channels that I note in my description down below. They're all uh, YouTube friends and acquaintances. They're all worth watching. Go ahead and check them out. 
And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.